Hello? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Ms. Hurd's counsel has mischaracterized the record multiple times, and Ms. Hurd lied to you. They've mischaracterized the testimony of police officers Symes and Haddon, who explicitly testified that they saw no signs of injury and no property damage. They mischaracterized the testimony of Walter Hamada, who testified clearly that there was no impact on Ms. Hurd's career at Aquaman 2 from anything said by Adam Waldman or Johnny Depp. And Ms. Hurd's casting was delayed because of creative issues. They've mischaracterized the testimony of Detective Sadaga. They mischaracterized the testimony of Ronald Shell. You've been here. You've listened to the testimony. You know the record. Ms. Hurd lied. And she lied again, and she kept lying. She lied six years ago on May 27, 2016, when she walked into court in Los Angeles to publicly accuse Mr. Depp of abuse for the first time. She lied again when she told the world over and over again that she donated all of the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. You heard the evidence that, about what she donated, and you watched her. You watched her try to save her lie about that broken promise with more lies on the stand in this courtroom. She lied again when she told the world in her op-ed on December 18, 2018, that she was a public figure representing domestic abuse, painting herself as a representative of abuse survivors everywhere, and painting Mr. Depp as a representative of perpetrators. She's come too far. She can't back down. She's lied too many times to too many people. So when Mr. Depp finally decided to fight to clear his name by filing this lawsuit, Ms. Hurd responded by making up more and more stories of more and more extreme abuse. She came up with a new accusation that Mr. Depp had raped her with a bottle in Australia. And she keeps making new claims up even now. At this trial, for the very first time, she claimed that she had been sexually assaulted the night of her 30th birthday, even though she had testified repeatedly about her birthday prior and never mentioned it. And at this trial, she also claimed for the very first time that Mr. Depp was hitting her all the time during the first year of their relationship, even though this first year she had testified previously was magic and bliss with absolutely no violence. Her story is a constantly moving target. It never stays the same. Mr. Depp owns his mistake. He owns all of them. You saw him do it on the stand in a raw and powerful way. But in this trial, Ms. Hurd has been confronted with her lies and the damage she has caused. And she cannot take any responsibility for what she has done. And you've seen the story, her story, it doesn't hold up. You've watched her performance on the stand you saw her get caught in lie after lie. The time has come for those lies to come to an end. The time has come for you, the jury, to decide the truth. I started this trial giving you an opening statement, and I said to you that words matter. And this case is about Ms. Hurd's words, the words she published in an op-ed about Mr. Depp. Ms. Hurd and her attorneys have talked a lot about this in this trial about the First Amendment. They've talked about the importance of free speech, and we agree. I'm a lawyer. Of course I agree with that. But the First Amendment doesn't protect lies that hurt and defame people. And there's a difference. Ms. Hurd has no right to tell the world that Mr. Depp physically or sexually assaulted her when that isn't true. That's not protected speech. Our US Constitution doesn't protect that speech. And it is a core value of American society that you are innocent until proven guilty. There, there is a presumption of innocence in this country. A person's life cannot and should not be destroyed by a baseless charge and no opportunity to defend yourself. That's why Mr. Depp had to bring this claim. Ms. Hurd was never going to stop calling him an abuser. 
The only way to clear his name was to stand up in this court where both sides are bound by the same rules of American law. A jury would be tasked, you, ladies and gentlemen, would be tasked with deciding once and for all Ms. Hurd's lies could be exposed in a fair and impartial process. When Mr. Depp sued her, Ms. Hurd apparently decided she needed to sue him back. And because there were no statements made by Mr. Depp on which she could base the claim, she sued him based on statements made by one of his lawyers, Adam Waldman, calling Ms. Hurd's accusations of abuse a hoax. Make no mistake though, they are a hoax. Ms. Hurd made up claims of abuse, and then she gave a performance where she passionately repeated those made up claims of abuse on the stand in front of each of you. But ask yourselves, who's really the one alleging a hoax here? Who wants you to believe that everyone else is lying, committing perjury? Ms. Hurd needs you to believe that all the people who showed up in this courtroom to testify on behalf of Mr. Depp, they're all lying. She needs you to believe that the witnesses you heard from, including security professionals, former cops, medical professionals, and police officers, they're all lying, covering up for Mr. Depp. She's asking you to believe that she's the one telling the truth and that the rest of the people in Mr. Depp's life are all part of a conspiracy of silence. This case is not just about whether you believe Mr. Depp or you believe Ms. Hurd. This case is about whether you believe Ms. Hurd or whether you believe Mr. Depp, Chrissy Dombrowski, who, yes, is here supporting her brother. Isaac Baruch, who weeped in front of the world. Kenan Wyatt, who doesn't work for Mr. Depp. Sean Betts, a former LA Sheriff's Department. Malcolm Connolly, he worked in the prisons in the UK. Starling Jenkins, a former US Marine. Travis McGivern, also another former police officer. Ben King, he worked for the Queen of England. David Kipper, Dr. David Kipper. Ms. Hurd's doctor. And yes, Mr. Depp's doctor. Debbie Lloyd, a nurse. Aaron Filotti, Ms. Hurd's personal nurse. Officer Signs, an LA police officer with training in domestic violence. Officer Haddon, her understudy, yes, in his first week studying to, to pick up on these signs of domestic abuse. Officer Gatlin, Brandon Patterson, who worked at Eastern Columbia Building, Kate James, Ms. Hurd's former personal assistant, Tara Roberts, Alejandro Romero. He took his deposition from his car because he had to go to work, but it didn't stop him from telling the truth. Edward White, Mr. Depp's business manager, Laura Wasser, one of the most famous divorce lawyers in California. Morgan Knight, Beverly Leonard, Morgan Tremaine, and Kate Moss. And all the other witnesses whose stories support Mr. Depp's description of what took place. These people have nothing to gain by coming forward.